Dah boleh ke kita start ke nak tunggu sikit masa lagi? Boleh, boleh. Okey. Kita start eh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum dan selamat pagi kepada uh, jemputan kita pada pagi ini. Uh, Puan Syazi Zulkifli yang merupakan bekas pemain bowling kebangsaan. Sehat ke Puan? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sehat. Sekarang PKP dekat rumah tu lah kan? Uh, uh, tak. Tapi nak keluar juga sebab training ni. Haa betul. Okay, so perhatian kepada semua peserta, sila pastikan mikrofon anda dalam mood silence sepanjang program berlangsung. Dan untuk mengetahui semua, link attendance akan diberikan selepas 30 minit program berlangsung dan link feedback form akan diberikan 5 minit sebelum program berakhir. Uh, para peserta diminta untuk mengisi kedua-dua form untuk mendapatkan CTD point. Okay, tanpa melengahkan masa lagi, saya menjemput Puan Shazin Sekifli untuk memberikan ceramah beliau yang bertajuk Sport Psychology, How to Handle Stress and Pressure. Kita silakan. Okey, Assalamualaikum semua. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Okey, okay, uh, uh, tengok semua on, on camera. camera. Ada nampak? Ada. Ada. Kau view saya sekejap. Okay, okay so, so uh, hari, hari ini saya, saya akan ada ikutan hari ini boleh kulit ya. Sekarang ada ikut? Haa tak ada. Haa ah, okay. Okay Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi semua. Um, Okey, uh, hari ini saya akan uh, share share experience saya uh, tentang pengalaman saya uh, on how to handle stress sebagai seorang ahli sukan lah dari perspektif ahli sukan sebab kita tahu kan macam uh, uh, kita tahu yang uh, ahli sukan ni memang banyak banyak uh, Ahli sukan ni memang banyak melalui uh, stressful situation Yelah sebab kita kan um, Wakil negara, so menang untuk negara So today I'll be sharing uh, mostly about my experiences sebagai seorang atlet uh, Dan cara-cara uh, Kira dalam sukan kita handle stress uh, Saya rasa kalau uh, siapa yang biasa dengar talk sebagainya 
kadang kita mesti uh, kita terfikir kan kenapa banyak orang panggil ahli sukan eh? uh, untuk bagi talks tentang stress, tentang psikologi, you know, because uh, yelah, benda tu macam benda umum juga. So, pa- so uh, pada saya lah, saya rasa salah satu sebab kenapa uh, banyak uh, organisasi atau like universiti panggil ahli sukan untuk, menja- untuk share experience Uh, kami ialah kerana ialah dalam sukan tu dia kira extreme extreme where memang uh, pressure tu memang ada so uh, kira semua kesilapan atau uh, kemenangan kita uh, is out in the open for the public you know compared to walaupun macam contohnya uh, hidup seharian kita di rumah pun kita stress juga tapi most of the stress is kita akan hanya kita, family kita atau colleagues kita je yang akan tahu. Berbanding kalau atlet, segala uh, kemenangan dan kekalahan dia akan diketahui umum oleh semua orang. So the pressure is 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 a lot immense compared to our normal day to day life lah. Sebab ialah semua orang kalau you menang semua orang tahu. Kalau you kalah pun semua orang tahu. So you tak boleh nak nak hide apa-apa. So okay, so today uh, saya akan share about uh, stress, how to handle stress dan saya akan ceritakan tentang pengalaman saya selama 30 tahun menjadi seorang ahli sukan uh, dan cara-cara saya uh, menangani uh, apa uh, situasi-situasi yang tegang uh, ketika saya mewakili negara. Okay? Okay. So one of the stress uh, factors yang kita selalu um, yang selalu terjadi bila kita stress is like mental block kan because selalu sometimes athlete banyak face uh, mental block sebab uh, tak semualah tapi kebanyakan athlete face mental block sebab uh, yalah sebab kadang bila kalah sekali then the next time you pergi compete you stress level you naik, sebab kita cakap stress, eh? stress level kita akan naik dan so kita akan uh, ada that mental block uh, terutama sekali kalau kita kalah dua atau tiga kali then you akan ada mental block cakap, oh alamak kali last time tu saya kalah so wait, kali ni uh, macam mana, menang ke kalah so benda past memories, uh, bad experiences akan ada dalam otak you dan uh, ada macam uh, bukan naluri tapi macam ada suara dekat sebelah tinggal dia akan cakap ah, boleh ke menang kali ni kan ah, hal tu dah kalah so those are one of the things yang uh, akan wujud bila you ada mental block so macam kita terlihat ni kan cakap stress, anxiety, tension, nervous, anger, worry tu semua akan uh, bersangkut paut uh, secara langsung ber- tentang stress ha? dia akan bagi kita stress lah ya, sebab bila you ada anxiety level and you akan tension, you tension, you akan nervous, bila nervous, kadang-kadang you marah. Kenapa lah? You marah sebab you pergi, kenapa? Kenapa aku nervous sangat ni? Kenapa saya nak ditandas 10 kali ni? So you akan, semua benda-benda kecil tu akan membuatkan you stress. Okay? So macam saya cakap tadi, okay, uh, when you are competing, especially kita orang sepatutnya so I speak kan, bila kita compete, orang berkalah sekali, kalau dua kali, okey lagi tak apa, tak apa, cuba lagi. Dan bila you kalah banyak kali kadang-kadang, uh, mental block tu akan ada di, di fikiran you. Boleh ke menang? Kenapa? Dan bila mental block tu ada, ia akan, macam uh, saya cakap tadi, uh, secara tak langsung membuat you stress. Okay? Macam ni. Kalau contoh kan, you kena strike to win. Dan bowling lah. Sekali you baling, alamak, split. Lepas tu sebab you dah pernah bu- benda tu dah pernah terjadi, kesalahan tu dah pernah terjadi dan kepala you dan you akan cakap, oh man, I knew I was going to choke. Choke is another way for uh, mental block juga, under pressure, okay? So, kalau saya siapa ada soalan, uh, bila saya present ni, boleh tanya eh? Tak payah tunggu sampai akhir, if like uh, in the middle tu, kalau you all ada apa-apa soalan ni nak tanya, takut terlupa ke apa ke, you, just, you can just ask. Dia have to wait until the end. So, okay. Ah, ada orang. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Okay, uh, so 
Okay, what is uh, mental block? What is stress? Okay, okay. stress so is a psychological obstacle that prevents athletes from performing at their peak level or prevents them from performing a specific skill. Sebab bila kita stress tu, ni, ni contoh dia sebag, uh, sebagai seorang athlete tapi kalau day to day life pun sama je dia punya application dia. Cuma bila kita sebagai athlete ni lebih ekstrim. Okay, so that's why kalau you dah jadi athlete normally Uh, you dah biasa kena, contoh dalam bowling kena strike untuk menang, kena spend untuk menang. You, bila you keluar ke kehidupan luar, benda-benda yang normally akan stress uh, kira you punya office mate yang lain, tak stress untuk you. Because you dah biasa terdedah kepada stress yang lebih daripada stress kerja. Okay? So, so ni berkait lapak dengan ni lah. Macam okay, uh, apa tu stress? Okay? Sebab dia macam mental block, macam kita cakap tadi, psychological obstacle. Dia macam, you nak, you dalam, sebenarnya you boleh. Tapi sebab you dah go through beberapa kekalahan, dalam otak you, you just cakap tak boleh. Okay? So, that's why you, before we have to, okay, macam sebelum kita nak betulkan atau kita nak uh, perbaiki stress level kita, kita kena tahu apa tu stress. Okay, the next one. Kenapa stress? Kenapa berlakunya stress? Okay. Okay, stress sebenarnya berlaku sebab kadang-kadang kita tak faham. Kenapa? Saya cakap ni, kenapa berlaku stress? Understand the root of the problem so that you will know how to overcome them. So, bila kita stress, kita kena fikir. Kenapa sebenarnya kita stress? Sebab stress ni dia macam ada beberapa jenis uh, stress lah. Dari segi psikologi, dari segi uh, fizikal, uh, dari segi... Uh, perasaan mulai stress balik and also dari segi internal or external stress. So kita dah tengok apa yang menjadi punca kita stress. Okay. Macam kita, macam uh, slide satu cakap okay. Depends on the individual focus style, perception, degree of self-confidence and mental toughness. Setengah orang benda kecil tak stresskan dia. Setengah orang benda remeh-temeh pun boleh stresskan dia. Sebab dia kumpul-kumpul-kumpul. So dia benda tu akan menjadi macam satu hari dia akan meletup. Okay, so dari segi fokus style, apa yang apa yang kita makna dari segi fokus style? Fokus style is sama ada internal atau external, dalaman atau luaran. Luaran dari segi persekitaran kita. Orang yang luar, orang di luar kita tu, di keliling, uh, keliling kita tu, dia yang menjawab, menyebabkan kita stress. Dari, macam dari segi bos tu, dari segi athlete, mungkin jurulatih saya, mungkin teammate saya, mungkin uh, persatuan saya, or MSN, uh, kan? So, tu dari segi uh, fokus style uh, external. Kalau dari segi fokus style internal pula, mungkin diri saya sendiri. Stress tu datang dari diri saya sendiri sebab saya expect too much of myself. I want to win every single competition that I go to. Uh, saya, walaupun tournament kecil pun saya nak menang. So, that also causes internal stress kepada diri sendiri. Okay? Tu dari segi fokus style. Kalau dari segi perception pula, persepsi kita pula, sama ada dia senang atau susah. So, bila senang, sebab dia dah biasa, kalau contoh asyik dah biasa masuk pertandingan besar-besar, dia masuk pertandingan kecil-kecil kan dia, ah, ok senang lah ni. So, bila dia, dia senang tu, bila otak dia fikir dia senang, automatically your stress level will go down. So, you akan relax, ok. Then, bila you, you buat sesuatu yang tak biasa, dia akan terus jadi otak you, you pemikiran you terus akan, eh, ni susah lah sebab tak pernah buat, tak pernah main sebelum ni, tak pernah compete kat level ni. So, automatically your mind pun akan pergi kepada macam danger zone. Dia macam kalau kita dari segi psikologi badan kita, uh, your body will go into flight or fight mode. Sebab badan ni, otak you dah fikir macam, oh susah ni. So you akan, badan you akan uh, bertindak balas terhadap pemikiran you. Then you will think like, oh why? Why what's happening? Why is she like uh, panicking? Why is her stress level up? Anxiety up? So dia ingat you, badan you ingat, you are going into a uh, defensive mode. Macam mana cakap flight or fight syndrome. Okay, defensive mode. So, uh, that's why, uh, contohnya, uh, in anything kita buat pun, uh, especially sport, especially macam studies pun, kenapa banyak orang cakap, oh, uh, dia nak dia nak sambung belajar overseas, uh, kenapa dia nak pergi universiti, tempatan atau swasta. 
supaya your you brighten your horizon you open up your mind jangan macam uh, katak bottom burung bila kita dah nampak dunia luar kita tahu ada banyak pengalaman pengalaman hidup uh, you akan tahu untuk uh, berfikir secara the bigger picture so bila you fikir bigger picture benda-benda kecil ni tak akan buat you stress tapi bila you tak ada pengetahuan tentang dunia luar you fikir benda masalah yang, yang kecil tu masalah besar So terus kita tak boleh macam stress level terus naik terus macam alamak macam mana Contoh masa kita sekolah lah, terus macam sekolah kan, uh, sekolah rendah, sekolah menengah Masa tu exam tu kita fikir macam oh, alamak habis lah exam, kalau tak kalau tak dapat A tak pass macam alamak end of the world kan Nanti kena marah dengan mak wapak, kena ni kena tu, cikgu marah, uh, kena tak belajar and so on So at that moment in time you think that oh passing at the exam is like the end of the world tapi sebenarnya bila you dah pergi ke universiti, you dah start kerja dan you fikir balik Nah, you benda ni mungkin bila you fikir balik macam gelak Eh hey, dulu masa masa sekolah rendah, sekolah menengah macam fikir macam Eh kalau tak pas, pas exam tu masa ke universiti, fikir kalau tak pas exam tu macam end of the world lah Tapi bila you fikir balik, because now you have a lot of life experience You uh, ada exposure, pendedahan kepada dunia luar uh, Experiences yang lebih uh, kira Uh, membuka mata you terhadap what what you can be later on 5 or 10 years from now on then you say oh benda ni benda kecil i can solve it okay so that is also why uh, macam a lot of um, uh, students uh, nak nak belajar di luar di luar daripada negeri dia contoh you kat KL you nak belajar di Sabah Sarawak ke Kedah ke you know And, or kalau you kat Malaysia kalau you ada uh, rezeki lebih you go and study uh, study abroad US, uh, Australia, you know, all those things so that you can, op- it opens up your mind bila you buka minda you, perspektif you tentang uh, ca- the perspektif dan cara you selesaikan masalah akan berlainan dengan orang lain, okay so that's, that's the deep perception dari segi mental toughness pula sama ada you fragile atau solid usually fragile ni is when your stress level dah tinggi sangat lah you jadi fragile semua benda macam kita cakap tadi, semua benda kecil-kecil pun dah jadi macam masalah besar kan? Masalah besar, benda kecil ni macam uh, apa? Contohnya alamat you tiba uh, ada equipment yang tak cukup if you're an athlete, if you're, contoh macam saya, okay alamat you tiba uh, tertinggal tak ada, tak ada um, tape untuk tape, untuk tape sebab nak main, nak compete kan tertinggal tape ke hotel so you macam alamat, kalau you fragile, you kata ah bila the whole tournament tak boleh main dah for that day for that day or for that whole uh, tournament that week tak boleh main dah sebab alamat tertinggal habislah tak boleh because you punya uh, apa security dia macam security blanket you dah alamat tak ada dah so mesti tak boleh main that is fragile type of mentality tapi kalau you have a solid uh, apa mental toughness you akan fikir okay tak apa okay dah benda tu uh, dah tinggal you cannot do anything about it just move on So you will find other ways untuk solve that problem. Benda yang tertinggal tape tu bukan menjadi satu isu yang besar. Sebab itu okey tak apa. Uh, kalau tak ada tape pun tak apa you tahan and then you just can go through the whole competition. Okay. Oh kami sedang fokus ada yang macam Okay bagus bagus. Okay. Um, okay the next one. Okay, this is a short video um, yang saya nak you all tengok. Hopefully ada lah volume. Eh. Kalau tak ada nanti bagi tahu. Sebab uh, before saya start the video, because one of the thing yang paling penting lah uh, stress level kita ni, whether naik atau turun, is kita kena tahu diri kita sendiri. Okay, you have to know yourself. You have to uh, know your values okay so that you know how to problem solve you know how to approach problems and how to solve problems okay okay uh, ni Adam tadi ada tanya uh, Adam Hazid Turandran tanya Puan ada stamina juga mempengaruhi stress adakah stamina juga mempengaruhi stress um, I would say in a way yes um, but to what extent tu terpulang pada diri sendiri sebab kadang-kadang Uh, that's why uh, kalau kita tengoklah banyak uh, 
apa research banyak uh, I would say banyak information uh, di luar sana always try and promote untuk kita ada healthy lifestyle kan healthy lifestyle kenapa healthy lifestyle tu penting because healthy lifestyle tu when you um, work out when you uh, exercise benda tu akan membantu stamina you like like what you ask ada customer stress yes because dia akan membantu untuk bagi you outlet untuk lepaskan stress tu cuba bayangkan kalau you tak exercise and you menghadap komputer uh, buat buat assignment or give lecture so nanti hari-hari buat benda sama tapi you tak ada outlet nak release your stress tu so stress you akan kumpul-kumpul and one day you akan meletup Okay, you akan meletup or uh, some people go through depression, some people tiba-tiba marah, mengamuk, you know, tak tentu pasal. So, what, how, how do you handle that stress yang akan apa build up every day, you know, because every day kita go through, kita akan buat kerja, you know, we have our life every day of our lives, our daily life, there's something that will stress you out, uh, whether you like it or not. So, Stamina tu, when if contoh bila you exercise, stamina dari segi exercise, it will help you to release, find a way to release your stress. So that when you come back to work, or you come back to your class, or you come back to study, tangki yang stress you tu, dia akan jadi kosong. Because you dah release kan stress you. Through exercise. Ada setengah orang, uh, stamina nya through exercise. Kalau ada setengah orang, uh, mungkin dia release stress, Through tengok wayang atau you can find your own outlet. Yeah, that's why uh, come back to point saya tadi. You have to know yourself. Okay, kita kena tahu diri kita sendiri apa kelebihan kita, apa kekurangan kita. So that when you are stressed, you know, okay, oh I'm stressed. You dah, you dah, you dah dapat ada awareness itu. Okay, I'm stressed. Rasa stress sangat sebab benda kecil pun you marah. So um, before it goes to like uh, depression or mental disorder, which is a big issue right now. Uh, you find it, find your outlet, find your own outlet. Whether it's working out, working out is the best, of course, because side effect of working out is you be healthy compared to other stuff. Ah, uh, some people like to go shopping, also another outlet. Ah, uh, whether you like it or not, tapi tu side effect itu terus kelah. Nanti bank dalam lama kurang 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 duit kan. So um, ada outlet yang lain you can go to. Maybe you can just go. Ah, uh, you suka tengok wayang atau tengok series kat TV. K-drama ke, uh, US series ke, so bila you tengok tu, dia macam relieve your stress because you lupa kejap tentang uh, your stress because you will be focused on the movie or on the series, okay? Another uh, outlet or way to release your stress, mungkin uh, pergi holiday, okay? Pergi holiday, kalau sebelum PKP lah, sekarang kita tunggu dulu pergi holiday, you tengok pergi uh, pantai, by the beach, you tengok all beach, semua relax, so you lupa sekejap perfect. Then when you come back, you are refreshed. So, all those things, dia akan kosongkan tangki you. Atau mungkin pada you, you rasa you nak main dengan anak you. Bila you main dengan anak you, okay lah. You dah lupa dah. Pasal stress kerja you, stress dunia ni, you lupa. Or another outlet maybe, uh, setengah orang tu dia uh, mengaji, solat, Oh, sometimes you, your outlet sebab you, you rasa macam if you rasa tak ada orang lain yang you bercakap bila you lepas solat tu ha, boleh you berdoa tu ha, you can release your stress semua Allah boleh dengar, you know Tuhan boleh dengar so that's also another outlet as well so there's a lot of different outlet yang you boleh releasekan your stress tapi yang first and foremost you have to know yourself and see which one um, is the outlet that suitable for you, okay? So, saya mainkan ni kejap. Dengar tak? Audio dia. Someone, we actually mean having some kind of status by being not someone, but something. Like the young badminton player wanting to be the best badminton player in Denmark, or a young athlete wanting to become a part of the youth national team. So this thing 
you have to become or achieve becomes far more important than who you become. And this is not the right way to find balance. When you realize who you want to be, everything gets so much easier. Because this will be your compass to guide you. It will guide you and show you how to make decisions, all kinds of decisions, but especially those decisions made under the pressure in the moment of brilliance. So how do we find out who we want to be? We try to find this in our work with mental training. I am 100% focused on helping young athletes find out who they are and who they want to be. Together with the, with the athlete, we set up a group of individual values, and we make sure that every value is very well defined so that the athlete knows exactly what every value means to that athlete. From there, we analyze every challenging situation from the perspective of those values. Then the value will give the answer to the athlete of what is the right and meaningful way for them to act in different kind of situations. When I first met Mikkel, he was in school. Now he is a full-time international badminton player. At first, Mikkel was struggling with keeping a high level of performance. Every time he faced the pressure, he felt like quitting. So he wanted to be able to continue even when he felt like quitting. So we uncovered Mikkel's values and we found out that he needed to work on a strong willpower, determination and focus on development. So based on those values, we made a game plan. So with time, Mikkel became conscious enough to be able, during pressure, to choose should he A, act on his feeling and quit, or should he B, stay in the match, follow his game plan, and continue. So because Mikkel's values were now aligned, he was capable of choosing B. Now he had a higher goal than just winning the match. Now he was also working on what kind of badminton player, what kind of person he would like to be. So by focusing not on the results, but on his values, it worked. You have to become someone. You have to become. Okay. Macam tadi, um, dia, she's a famous, um, tak silap, uh, Scandinavian punya uh, professor, that talk tadi tu. Okay, so macam saya cakap tadi, saya cakap tadi kan, one of the points saya cakap tadi is your environment. Okay, your environment. So first thing, first and foremost, you must know who are you. What are your values? So what are your values? Apa yang you rasa um, ciri-ciri yang penting tentang diri you? Okay, uh, contoh like for me, what are my values? My values is... Um, when I compete as an athlete, first is uh, I love my sport. I love my sport. I love my country. Uh, I love my teammates and my team. Uh, so I would want. So I want to win for my country, for my team, for my parents, for my family. Okay. Uh, I am very determined. Okay. I never give up. Uh, also can be one of your values. Um, I'm stubborn also one of my values uh, but I am able to use it in a positive way instead of a negative way okay um, so, so, uh, patriot, 
uh, patriotic, contoh lagi. There's a lot of values that that you can have, positive and negative. It's okay to have negative, so you know what your negative values are. Uh, and then you can later on maybe change those negative values into something positive. Okay, so in this slide, contohnya, uh, apa? Uh, when I say environment, kan? Okay, first kita tahu siapa diri kita. Okay, siapa Charlie Zulkifli? Huh? Siapa Charlie Zulkifli? Charlie Zulkifli seorang atlet kebangsaan yang suka menang untuk negara, yang telah wakil negara selama 30 tahun, you know. Okay, those are the practice of saya. Siapa saya? Okay, know yourself. Who are you? Apa kelebihan you? Contoh macam saya, uh, dan suka bowling, kele uh, advantage saya, kelebihan saya is my mental toughness. Okay, mental toughness. That's my my thing. My thing. Saya kalau disukan. Memang saya minat. Saya kalau disukan. So, mental toughness is my thing. So, bila saya pergi bertanding, saya tahu uh, saya dari segi mental toughness, saya akan lagi kuat mental saya daripada orang lain. Daripada tim, uh, contoh, bila saya compete dengan uh, apa players lain daripada overseas kan. Daripada US lah, daripada Korea lah semua. Sebab, yelah, apa, in one sense kita fikir macam oh lah, Malaysia kecil je, siapa lah kita Malaysia orang Asia kan kecil je compared to US, negara maju, first world country, bla 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 semua tu kan so macam kita akan fikir macam you rasa diri kecil, you rasa diri kecil, who am I like you know they are from US you know, they have all the facilities, they are so good, they have won world championship before so you akan rasa macam kecil but because of my mental toughness Saya tak terfikir pasal benda tu. You know, tak fikir pasal benda tu sebab saya dah pernah compete dengan orang before and I know mungkin dia dari segi teknologi, dari segi yalah uh, apa uh, semua equipment dia mungkin lagi canggih dari saya, you know. Uh, mungkin lagi bagus dari saya. Tapi dari segi mental toughness saya lagi bagus dari dia. Okay, so but you can only get that if you know yourself. How do you know yourself? Because saya tahu saya mental toughness saya bagus sebab Saya buat homework saya. Saya baca buku, I work on my mental game as much as I work on my physical game. Okay? And when you do that, you know yourself, you know your your strengths and your weaknesses. Automatically, secara tak langsung, your stress level will go down. Because you know, you know you have more knowledge than that person. Contohnya because um, when I compete, internationally uh, dalam uh, wakili apa contoh Asian Games, Sea Games, uh, Commonwealth Games, World Championship semua orang akan ada uh, physical or ability teknik yang sama dengan saya ialah semua dah sampai world level kan so what will differentiate you kita dengan dia orang apa yang akan buat you menang gold medal berbanding dia orang Apa kelebihan yang you ada yang dia orang tak ada? You know, when you go uh, competition or uh, apa-apa lah, when you like uh, do a presentation, probably like in a group ke, kadang-kadang you akan rasa like, oh, saya ni macam nervous sangat bila buat presentation. So, if I go and present for my group, then maybe, you know, it's not a really good thing. Nanti saya tergagap dan terus, you know, uh, lecturer tengok or student lain tengok, dia macam tak boleh uh, faham apa information yang saya nak sampaikan you know in that sense maybe tapi you are good at finding information good at doing slides good at other stuff so in a group you have different people good at different things so use that use the advantage and the um, good points of each individual as and then combine it as a group Mungkin seorang tu dia tak boleh, dia tak pandai nak cari information, tak pandai nak, nak you know, uh, nak nak tulis or nak nak buat slide ni, tapi dia bagus bercakap. So, you use that other person for their strength. You buat slide, seorang akan buat slide, siapa yang pandai buat slide tu, or, or you know, get information and all things, buat that part of the group work, the other person will do the presentation part. So that's why it comes back to you have to know who you are and your strength, okay? And this example ni is contoh ni is dalam senarai sukan lah. Okay, like uh, for me, like the environment that I'm in is contoh my coach. Okay, my coach. And then uh, my parents. Okay, and then uh, uh, 
uh, my team manager, official, and then my teammate. So that's why you have to know. Semua yang di uh, your surrounding ni, dia mainkan peranan for your stress level besides you yourself. Okay. So macam contohnya, for example, like my coach. Okay, dia bagi saya satu skill. Saya kena buat. Tapi saya tak dapat buat. And then, or contohnya, another uh, example is contoh, kita orang banyak main uh, different oiling pattern. Okay. Bila kita orang pergi... Uh, international uh, games world championship asian championship semua tu kita orang kena main different oiling pattern so uh, for me i know my uh, strength is bila oiling pattern tu pendek short oil sebab saya physically saya punya physical game saya laju saya balik laju dah compared to my other teammate okay teammate saya yang lain mungkin balik slow sikit So, mungkin advan- dia akan advantage pada long oil. Bila minyak tu lebih. Saya beli lane kering, advantage pada saya. So, mungkin coach you akan bagi you skills, bagi you benda untuk buat. So that improve, you can improve your weaknesses. Okay? Tapi, kalau you don't know yourself, bila coach tu bagi uh, drills for you, sebab coach tu dia dah, macam usually a coach, dia dah experience before. Especially kalau ex-athlete coach tu, dia dah tahu. Dia tengok dia dah tahu, okay, dia ni kena uh, apa kelemahan dia, apa kelebihan dia. So, they will give you uh, drills, they will give you things for you to work on so that your weakness be- can become your strength. Okay, tapi kan kita tak tahu. Sebagai athlete kita tak tahu because kita punya perspektif mungkin sebagai untuk di- kita tengok diri kita je sendiri, tak tengok the big picture. So, kita cakap dari segi persekitaran. Uh, when somebody like uh, close to you, uh, your, your coaches, your mentors or your lecturers can uh, give you something, be open. Be open and try it out because maybe they see something that you don't. Okay. And then contoh, uh, and then yelah, probably at first bila dia kasi you the drills and also you akan rasa stress because benda tu benda baru and dia belum jadi habit lagi. So you don't know how to... Uh, do it. You don't know how to approach it. But, as you do it more and more, bila dah buat lebih banyak kali, banyak kali, lama-lama you akan uh, ada that knowledge of what to do and what not to do. Okay? Dan contoh environment lagi is your parents. Kadang-kadang, especially like macam, aku cakap sports parents ni lah kan. Sports parents ni kadang bila you uh, bila anak you menang, oh, okay, dia, dia bangga, dia cakap dengan, oh, okay, uh, ya, yeah, anak saya menang, anak saya uh, ambil SSWP lah, Sukma lah menang gold medal. Tapi bila dia kalah, dia akan marah you. So that's why it's important uh, as a sports parent, yang you jangan, uh, you jangan uh, attach kan self-worth anak you pada uh, result. Okay. Sama ada dia menang atau kalah. Try and focus on the process. Okay. This will also help you in your stress level. Buat balik kepada real life situation ni. Stress level you. Most of the people get stressed out. Because they focus too much on the result. You nak menang. You, you nak dapat A. Contoh exam. You nak get that project. You nak uh, apa. You nak get promoted. These are all the results. So a lot of people get stressed out because they focus on the results. Kenapa most of the SD um, that also work on their mental game are not stressed out. They are stressed out juga. They are stress, stress level ni tinggi juga. Tapi tak stressed out. Sebab dia tahu benda result ni yang cakap promotion, for example lah, promotion winning gold medal, you know, getting an A in your exam and all things. Those things are not within our control. So why stress out on things that's not within your control? It's unnecessary. Tak, pen- tak, tak, tak penting pun. Sebab benda tu bukan dengan kawalan you. You boleh kawal ke you menang gold. Tak, kalau orang lain main lagi bagus, nanti they beat you. So what? Should you focus on? You should focus on the process. Okay? That's why, macam saya cakap tadi, kebanyakan uh, athlete, ex-athlete lah, tak kisah which level pun, kalau dia dah selalu main, selalu compete, whether MSSM, SUKMA, uh, national especially kan, uh, elite level, 
bila dia buat benda kecil-kecil dia tak dia tak rasa stress and dia banyak stand out leadership qualities dia ada because dia tak fikir pasal result dia akan fikir pasal proses okay proses is the one that gets you through stressful situation okay proses which is the basic contoh um, Okay, let me see contoh. Okay, contoh uh, as an asset lah juga lah saya bagi. Contoh as an asset. Bila prior situation, kadang you you kena you kena uh, strike to win. Just saya cakap lagi, strike to win. Uh, ka, uh, apa, kalau you paling strike to strike, you menang. Uh, kalau 8, you kalah, you tie. 9, you win by one, uh, you win by one pin. Kalau strike dah memang menang do, by two pins lah kiranya kan. So, bila you bila you step on the approach tu macam saya, bila saya step on the approach tu dalam otak saya, saya patut fikir saya nak strike or saya akan fikir pasal benda lain macam saya, saya akan fikir pasal proses so what is the process? ok, what is the process? dalam bowling, proses je is contoh, pre-shot rutin contoh, uh, pre-shot rutin tu okay, dalam kawasan tu, apa yang saya akan buat ok you have a list of what uh, you go through in your mind saya contoh pichat rutin saya ialah okay, kena uh, keringkan tangan okay, tengok bola, lak bola then saya pegang bola saya tengok line mana saya nak main visualize, then saya string tangan saya dan lepas tu saya baling bola when these are the things yang pichat rutin ni yang saya boleh control whether or not saya dapat strike saya tak boleh control so focus on the process for example you want to score an A you want to get good results in in uh, your term papers you know what should you focus on studying and going through all the subjects that you learn so once you just go through that subject once you are prepared when the exam comes you'll be able to answer the question but if you're not prepared I want to get an A, I want to get an A, fight. Uh, but then, how do you get an A? When you exam, terus jawab, you say, oh, boleh dapat A. Yeah, some people lah, ada photographic memory tu, okay lah. Dia tak payah nak baca sangat. But most people have to read, have to learn, have to understand. Then, they are able to answer questions. Contoh, sama juga proses dia, cuma proses dia, uh, memang semua kena fokus on proses. Cuma, proses tu, in different environment, are different things. So, contoh macam dalam uh, sukan is pre-competition, pre-shot routine, apa yang you buat. Kalau dalam uh, exam, if you're a student, knowing your topics, knowing your subject well. So, do, it's the same thing, okay? And then, like your official. Okay, your official mungkin, um, for me, kadang-kadang bila kita compete, kadang-kadang office tu adalah uh, mungkin sebab Kerana dia nak kita menang kan, tapi dia tak dapat nak kontrol diri dia dengan, dengan stress level dia because uh, mungkin dia tak perasan, uh, mungkin dia bukan dia bukan atlet, so kadang-kadang uh, stress level dia akan transfer ke, ke kita uh, sebagai atlet, okay? So you have to know, uh, as an atlet, okay, you tengok manager tu stress dia, you just biar, you just like kind of walk away, jauh daripada orang, atau you as a manager, bila you kadang-kadang you cakap, you cakap, alamak, you kena menang, you kena menang the word kena tu eh, you patut buang daripada vocab you okay? kena, wajib tu bu buang daripada vocab because benda tu akan add extra pressure on your athlete or your student or what not just concentrate on the process okay, remember to remember to uh, ingat kena kena buat ni okay? ingat buat ni ingat buat ni Instead of ingat untuk menang tau uh, that is the post, that is the result And then the other thing, okay, uh, bila you menang, okay, so you must remember who and know who you are and the people around you pun, bila you tahu diri you, you akan dapat um, terangkan uh, your values, uh, your your mental uh, strengths, weaknesses to the people around you so that they will know what to say in pressure situation, okay so that dia tak, dia akan tahu, dia akan awareness dia ada so dia tahu, oh okay, tak boleh cakap ni nanti lagi pressure oh, oh macam contohnya, oh macam 
uh, contohnya macam saya lah uh, bila saya compete kan overseas saya um, paling pandai kalau saya nampak teammate saya struggle so saya I will try and help them so sometimes my coach say eh hey, um, it's not bowling well can you step up and help so saya akan step up bila saya main bagus tak saya will find a way to step up so that those are the examples that you can use okay okay bila the next slide will be bila okay contoh bagi atlet you kena start during training so semua yang uh, proses yang you nak apply kan masa competition tu you kena start in training okay training Uh, for for athletes, kalau macam for you all, maybe, I don't know, maybe quiz, maybe test kat dalam kelas ke, okay? And then, which will come to pre-competition. Macam kita orang pre-competition. So, sebelum competition, apa benda kita, kita akan buat. Dan saya, saya ada a list of things. Saya ada script. Saya ada script, saya ada a list of things that I will do before competition. And then, saya juga ada uh, dalam script saya tu, Okay, uh, pergi tu bangun pagi dah, uh, you akan rasa best, you dah ni, not all macam uh, kira positif, not all positif and in a sense of, oh saya bangun pagi saya terus rasa best, saya terus saya terus akan menang, saya like, no, because you have to put in certain things in your script juga, you kena prepare dalam script you, what if satu pagi tu you bangun, you rasa tak sedap badan, you rasa down, So, you kena prepare kan dalam skrip itu juga benda-benda unsur-unsur tu. So that when that thing happen, bila you nak pre-competition, you are prepared for it. Okay, jangan banyak orang cakap, oh, saya bangun pagi, saya bangun best, saya makan breakfast, uh, kegemaran saya, dan saya pergi tempat tournament, dan saya terus rasa semangat, dan saya terus main. Kadang-kadang, benda tu memang bagus, tapi kadang tak logik. Kalau semua bagus, you kena masukkan Uh, macam unsur okay. uh, walaupun saya rasa tak bagus tapi tak apa saya dah tahu uh, yang uh, saya telah berlatih cukup untuk ni you know something negative but you counter back with something positive okay contoh nah bila you dah dalam competition kena in competition then you tahu macam nak perform sebab you dah construct the process and one thing saya nak point out bila kita stress ni is mostly bila proses tu kita tak pernah apply sebelum kita nak Uh, tak pernah buat sebelum kita nak pergi for a big presentation for a big competition kita tak buat in training okay so you have to make sure you practice it in training contoh presentation lah whatever not uh, exam quiz so that bila big exam final exam you tahu dah kira kalau start kalau you tengah belajar tu kira competition tu kira your final exam lah kan viva ke your final exam okay So you have to practice. Sebab so, tu kenapa kadang orang buat presentation kan? Dia akan tengok kat cermin, dia akan cakap kat cermin. Macam dia buat presentation. Because it's almost the same technique that athletes go through. You practice and practice and practice until it becomes second nature. Sampai bila you dah nak cakap buat presentation tu, terus dah macam you tak fikir, tak payah tengok skrip, tak payah tengok cue cards ke apa, you dah terus tahu dah your topic so well that dia bertanya lah apa-apa, you boleh jawab. Okay? And then post competition. Post competition contoh kita buat post mortem. Uh, after every contoh macam exam, ya yeah, you can see kalau result you tak bagus, kita tengok which subject that you are uh, weak at, you know, um, for that for that particular uh, topic. Uh, which topic are you weak at for that particular subject? Uh, contoh macam uh, saya macam bila saya bertanding, saya akan tengok, okay, uh, tengok saya punya stat. Okay, percentage strike saya berapa? Uh, kira first shot saya berapa shot yang lebih daripada 8 pin? Uh, sparing percentage berapa? Whether it 80%, 90%, 70%, then, then saya akan tahu bila saya pergi training next time, apa yang saya perlu uh, betulkan. So when you have that thought process, uh, that thought, uh, that plan and you go through that process, secara tak langsung stress level you akan berkurangan okay uh, and then you will know you will be able to handle stress a lot better because you dah plan dah dalam otak you okay okay apa nak buat macam mana nak solve kalau ini ini ni so you dah ada selalunya stress level akan naik is bila you tak tahu when you go in blind tak tahu nak buat macam mana alamak macam ni nak buat macam ni nak ni uh, so that is why your stress level goes up
Okay, this is another yang sambungan sikit daripada tadi tu. Puan Shazlin. Ya. Yeah. Ada soalan dekat chat box. Boleh, boleh. Boleh, boleh. Okay. 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 Uh, see what the, uh, pernah tak rasa down setelah kalah pertandingan dan rasa tak nak main bowling dah pernah pernah um, nanti saya akan saya akan uh, explain jawab soalan tu uh, lepas this video eh to a 15, 15 year old that will make him or her into an elite athlete well, first you have to know what I say to the parents. So I got a call from a mom to a 14-year-old swimmer. He was very talented. They're always very, very talented. Like the best in his league. But in competition, he gets angry. And every time he faces the pressure, he goes into pieces. And this mother felt so bad for her son. He trained so hard. I want him to perform so that he can feel successful. Can you help him? So this is a mother who clearly understands the process of performance. Can you help my son perform? That's what the mother said. But what parents do is often very different. Standing on the sideline numerous times, I've been listening to comments and questions asked from one parent to another and often in front of their children. Did she win? How many goals did he score? Isn't she in the position for the national team? Shouldn't he be able to win the next game? So the parent act as if the results are everything. Getting to that top of the podium, getting the best grades, coming in as number one. All the questions I hear are centered on the result. Not who you are, not your experience, not what you've been working on, not how you felt, not your thoughts or your plan, no. All the questions are centered on what you have achieved or what you want to achieve. So from a very young age, this becomes our fixed mindset. The results are what matters. This doesn't work. We have to change this. We, ha we have to flip it upside down for these young people. We have to make them understand that this focus on results will ruin them. And then they'll never reach that podium anyway. To a 15-year-old 15, 15 that will make him or her Okay, um, saya tadi cakap kan, dia relate balik kepada yang saya cakap tadi tu, okay. Concentrate on the process and not the result, okay. Macam one of the things and key things yang dia, dia cakap uh, in the first video tu, yang saya tunjuk tu, become someone before you become something. So let's say we have to know ourselves, okay. Your self-worth is not based on your accomplishment. You have value. You are the value, diri you sendiri, based on a lot of aspects of yourself. Your personality, your treatment of others, how do you, uh, apa, uh, layan dengan lain, idea you, mungkin idea you memang, memang idea yang memang bernas, orang lain pick out of the box, orang lain fikir ni, you fikir lain. Uh, being true to yourself, you seorang yang jujur, seorang yang sincere, okay, and perspective you mungkin berlain dan berlain lain. Okay, macam uh, tadi, Contoh ada soalan tadi tu, Adam tu tanya saya lagi soalan, dia kata apa, okay, pernah tak saya rasa 
saya uh, down telah kalah dalam pertandingan dan rasa tak nak main bowling dah. Yes. If you follow saya and if you seen me talk before, I always share this story. Uh, masa tahun 98 uh, Commonwealth game saya uh, bukan salah seorang uh, atlet yang disasarkan untuk menang pingat emas sebab pasal tu uh, bowling dipertandingkan di Sepang Kemulia pada kali uh, pertamanya, pertama kali bowling dipertandingkan pada Sepang Kemulia okay? dan saya baca uh, apa uh, oh Uh, ketika tu uh, opening ceremony saya one of the flag bearers you know so banyak orang uh, menaruh harapan pada saya and then pada Commonwealth Games tu saya tak dapat menang gold medal saya hanya menang silver dengan bronze okay um, so saya rasa masa saya lep- habis Commonwealth saya rasa macam saya dah let the whole country down ialah sebab banyak orang uh, apa dah menaruh harapan untuk saya menang uh, banyak orang uh, apa uh, apa uh, basically macam uh, yalah uh, nak saya menang lah sebab satu bukan saja untuk sukan saya bowling sebab kali, kali pertama di pertandingan dipertandingkan tapi juga uh, you know sebab bila you menang ialah home ground kan uh, masa tu 98 home ground kau main kat Kuala Lumpur So memang you nak menang lah depan, depan your family, depan your friends. So saya rasa tak menang. So lepas habis tu, walaupun saya tak menang gold, sebenarnya tak menang gold. Tapi saya menang pingat juga, silver and bronze. Tapi saya rasa macam, alamak saya dah let the whole country down, you know. Dan uh, bila saya, saya almost uh, nak stop bullying lepas habis tu. Tapi saya ambil time off ni. Saya ambil time off, I think lebih kurang sebulan tak silap. Uh, plus minus, sebulan saya ambil dan saya macam re-evaluate balik. Re-evaluate balik tentang diri saya, tentang goal saya, tentang apa saya nak jadi 5 tahun akan datang, 10 tahun akan datang Whether um, saya hanya nak jadi alisukan And then dalam masa itu saya actually dapat um, ketahui value-value yang lain tentang diri saya um, saya lepas saya tu saya okey saya cakap okey mungkin saya dah fokus terlalu banyak dalam sukan sebab lepas saya habis SPM saya totally fokus on sport sebab saya tahu kamu lagi nak datang so saya memang just fokus on on bowling 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 so uh, bila saya habis kamu lagi tu saya saya perasan oh saya fokus obses sangat tentang bowling so saya cakap okey tak apa uh, take a rest kejap, re-evaluate balik and then saya sambung belajar saya cakap okay takpelah uh, saya sambung belajar lah di UM so saya sambung belajar di UM um, saya sambung belajar di UM uh, then Alhamdulillah actually it's one of the best decisions I've made lepas kat UM tu saya ambil sport, sport psychology saya akan risukan media saya, saya memang minat sport and saya ambil sport science and then actually because of my failure in the 98 Commonwealth game a lot of other doors opened up for me and i begin to see a different perspective uh, uh, and i uh, begin to learn a different side of being an athlete and then in actual fact it actually made me a better athlete sebab bila jadi athlete you tahu orang akan buat 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 you just know how to do it uh, Physically, we buat je lah apa coach you suruh. Tapi kadang-kadang you tak tahu kenapa you buat tu. Your understanding of why you have to do certain movement or react a certain way, you tak tahu kenapa. So, bila saya belajar masuk UM, uh, belajar sport science, saya, tiba-tiba saya macam ada banyak apa light bulb moment. Sebab saya rasa, oh, oh sebab ni, oh ni sebab kenapa saya kena buat macam tu. Oh, macam Uh, contoh lah simple, the most simple one is like oh okay macam dulu kot tu cakap warm up, warm up, warm up sebelum, sebelum main bowling so you pun cakap alah kot ni warm up dia buat apa nak warm up kan macam tak cool lah, oh, malas lah terus start lah kan takkan nak ni then bila you dah masuk sport science you belajar oh kenapa you, kenapa warm up tu penting 
sebab biar muscle you, temperature muscle you daripada sejuk terus uh, terkejut ke panas so you have to warm up your muscle so that you tak ada injury, you tak ada apa uh, cramp and uh, banyak lagi lah so you, saya belajar the other side of uh, of sport then dia, dia membuatkan saya lagi faham tentang benda-benda yang dulu mungkin saya tahu saya kena buat tapi saya tak faham So because of that failure, it has helped me to become actually a better athlete uh, after my failure. And actually like sebab uh, tahun 98 kawan tu saya uh, rasa down lah and then uh, saya like mentally pun saya rasa down and then uh, so saya bila saya di evaluate balik tu saya saya sebab saya suka sport psychology so saya start baca tentang uh, apa ahli-ahli sukan lain, tengok movie, sports movie, uh, saya collect biography, ahli sukan lain, saya, saya, saya tengok apa yang dia buat yang saya tak buat supaya saya belajar dari kesilapan saya. So, apa yang dia buat yang saya tak buat? So, saya tengok, saya tengok, saya baca dan saya tengok apa yang dia orang ada yang saya boleh apply. Saya boleh cuba pada diri saya sendiri. So within 98, from 98 onward, saya buat banyak trial and error on myself try and error on myself on like uh, dari segi sport psychology, apa saya saya boleh buat, apa saya boleh buat oh dulu Andrea Gassi buat macam ni uh, saya tengok selalu buat macam tu tak, oh Monica Salas buat macam ni dan Monica Salas dia macam lepas dia kena step uh, dengan peminat tu dia dah tak boleh dia ada mental block dia tak boleh, nak every time dia masuk uh, masuk court je dia rasa macam oh ada orang nak nak apa, nak nak uh, tikam dia, nak attack dia and so on and so forth. So saya baca, saya baca, saya baca kumpul buku and then finally, Alhamdulillah in 2001 I was able to break through. Took me three years, three years to actually re-evaluate myself, re-know my, re relearn and uh, know myself again. Took me three years of trial and error then pada tahun 2001, Alhamdulillah saya dapat menang World Champion Master, saya lawan Tori Togerson. Okay, saya lawan Tori Togerson and dalam World Champion Master pun bila saya lawan Tori Tori Gusun pun, at least kita main dua game. The first game, the first ball saya balik, saya masuk longkang. Ha, saya masuk longkang. So at least the process of uh, recovering and and getting back up again after falling down pun not smooth sailing. Tapi because of the trial and error saya dah uh, buat pada diri saya dari segi uh, sport psychology and plan saya, saya tak panik and I was able to come back after that gutter shot. Okay? So I hope uh, terjawab soalan ni walaupun panjang sikit. So from 98 saya memang down lepas saya tak dapat menang gold medal uh, walaupun saya menang silver and bronze. I was able to uh, re-evaluate balik diri saya, tukar balik saya punya goal setting and took me three years to come back. 2001 saya menang World Champion Master dan saya juga menjadi uh, pemain bowling wanita pertama yang menang World Champion Master sebab sebelum tu tak pernah uh, perempuan menang sebab dia uh, format dia special sikit dia only the top 16 best players in the world invited to bowl in that World Champion Masters dekat UK macam tu and then you akan lawan head to head and they scratch so perempuan dengan lelaki lawan scratch lah ya. tak, tak ada ada handicap tak ada apa So yeah, took, took me three years to come back uh, and come back stronger, Alhamdulillah. Okay. So maybe some you think like, how? How? How do I uh, go past the mental block and so So tadi, uh, I think in between from when we started tadi sampai sekarang, saya dah share juga kan? Uh, banyak tentang how. How do you solve the problem? How do you approach? Um, stress. So, comes back in awareness. Awareness, awareness tentang diri kita sendiri, tentang environment kita, tentang kemampuan diri kita, tentang orang di sekeliling kita, okay? Create the right kind of emotional levels within yourself, okay? Sebab at the end of the day, you can ingat that you are in control, not your body not someone else so you are the 
power to dictate how you will handle the stress. Dan saya cakap tadi, you can find your outlet. Exercise, if you, you suka this physical, the exercise, main sport or or you jenis tak suka exercise sendiri, go and play sport, team sport ke, netball ke, volleyball ke with your friends and release that stress, okay? Because you are in control. Focus on the right thing at the right time. Contoh bila you, uh, yang kita cakap tadi kan, tak dari segi uh, focus on the process, okay? Jadi saya, bila saya baling, saya, saya focus on the right thing. Contoh right thing saya ialah focus on my release, and my target. Okay? At the right time. Bila right time? Bila saya release bola, saya akan fokus and visualize line saya. So, use that same concept in your daily life. Okay? Uh, jangan masa nak nak buat nak buat uh, buat A, you fokus kepada B and C. Okay? Which comes back to the process. Focus on the right process for that particular uh, moment in time uh, or task. Maintain consistent level of confidence throughout the performance. So, ini berkait rapat juga dengan kadang-kadang kita kan, bila kita dah uh, biasa buat satu benda, uh, macam kita cakap tadi, ya, easy tu kan. Bila easy, you relax. So, kadang bila you relax tu, you become overconfident. Okay, you become overconfident. And if you are an athlete, itu is a very, very dangerous uh, place to be in. It's a total no-no. Sebab kadang bila kita overconfident, we can we tend to make a lot of mistakes. Sebab kita, ah, senang je lah, tak payah nak fikir. And then end up, you akan buat kesilapan yang senang and end up orang yang probably ranking dia lagi rendah dari you, dapat beat you. Okay? Because of uh, level of confidence tak consistent. Kejap you rasa, oh kadang-kadang uh, another way pun you boleh pushing 300 degrees, kadang-kadang you rasa macam tak ada confidence, tak ada confidence. Kejap you rasa macam overconfident, tengok, oh. Okay, ni boleh makan ni, boleh ni, boleh ni. Uh, I lagi bagus dia. Dan sekali dia mas- bila dia masuk tu, alamak. Kita pun rasa tak ada confidence pula. So, the confidence level can go up and down. Okay? Can go up and down. So, you have to maintain a, uh, the same level of confidence. Okay? Yang best, kadang-kadang you just, whether, kalau you tahu you bagus ke apa, you just stay humble and just like, you know, uh, just do, buat benda you, tak payah risau pasal lain, no? tak payah nak nak komen banyak orang lain, just focus on your task and yourself. Okay, uh, this one is another video um, yang yang saya cakap tadi pasal World Tempting Masters tu kan? Uh, after uh, saya menang, so ni siapa yang tak tengok so you can actually see in real life lah, kind of real life because uh, ni But now let's look back at some past masters and who can forget the final of 2001 between Shalin Zulkifli of Malaysia and Tori Torgerson of Norway. We join our commentators with Zulkifli trailing by just five points coming into the tenth and final frame. Tim Mack has just rejoined us in the commentary box and he is just saying to us he can't remember seeing a match quite this intense. None of us can. Well, because she's adrift by those five, she has to think in terms of three strikes here and just hope that something happens to Tora in this final frame. Yep, that's for sure. She needs to trust on God right now. And we also have another nickname on Tora. We call him the God. So, we will see what's happening here. got to have this absolutely vital is she going to keep That's a good her shot. hopes alive it looks very good indeed excellent excellent oh, wow and marie putney enjoyed that one but everybody's enjoying this what a final well i feel privileged just to be here to see this i have never seen a match this good Well, she's got to do it all over again now. And Marie Putney says, go on, girl. She's been saying that throughout the tournament, actually. Very supportive of each other, the women competitors in this uh, tournament. 
Now, can she keep it going? Shailene takes a lot of time here. She gets through the shot like a hundred times in her head right now. She won't. She won't throw a perfect strike here yet. For sure. Well, there's a measure of how captivating it is. Tim's been in the box now for about three minutes and he still hasn't said anything. Well, he's like everybody else, absolutely absorbed in this match. Can Zulkifli keep this incredible run going? Guy Kaminsky there, the South African who made the last eight, also enthralled by this. Can she keep it going again? Yes! Oh, this is awesome. It's beyond words now. Well, Tora is now in a must-strike situation. Phenomenal. Can she do it again and just build the Go pressure? On, Paul, get in there. Oh, well, she left a couple. What is that going to do? Well, a phenomenal performance from Charlene Zulkifli. Yeah, she, now, she now has to just sit and watch. What happens now? That's a good shot. There's one. Perfect shot from Tori in that situation. Job half done. Tim Mack has just collapsed on the floor in disbelief. He can't watch anymore. Should be great to try to match Tori's pulse right now. It's going to be like 250 or something at, for sure. Even if he looks like... He's, gone he's back. very cool. He's, I tell you, his pulse right now is very, very high. He's got to get the strike. Meticulous preparation from Tora again. Can he do it? This for a championship. It's a good shot. He had a chance. Oh, would you believe it? They're wobbling. They're not going to go. And once again, history repeats itself on Tora Torgerson. Say sweet. He's near on the same toe, he has to find a spot, a ball push away in the break point and get light in the pocket. Nobody can believe it. Well, he finishes with a, a spare, but what drama. They're on their feet, they're on their feet at the Goldsbrook Leisure Centre. A tribute to both bowlers. Charlene Zulkifli showed Phenomenal mental discipline and toughness to overcome Tora Torgerson. She overturned a four pin deficit on the very last frame. Who will ever forget that classic? Join us next time for more first round action at the PartyPoker.net World Ten Pin Masters. But now let's look back at some past masters and who can forget the Okay, so tadi tengok kan tadi masa tahun 2001 uh, ya yeah, yang saya cakap tadi lepas uh, saya down dan saya rasa nak give up uh, bukan saja a uh, uh, I mean as a bowler but as an athlete lah give up macam tak nak, tak nak, tak nak main dah lah bowling tak nak, tak nak jalan esokan So Bila tengok, bila saya cakap you must concentrate on the free shot routine tu yang proses tu Bila tengok saya, saya swing bola, saya senyum, saya uh, Tengok target saya, saya visualize that is all proses yang saya cakap tadi So You will learn uh, Apa proses yang unik untuk diri you sendiri melalui pengalaman you setelah mencuba dan mencuba lagi so all through trial and error okay trial and error you will know which what things that you need to focus on uh, apa yang you kena fikir so this one is also another contoh sebab tadi saya ambil contoh dari tahun 2001 kan 2001 pishot routine tu you tengok sekarang ni 
16 tahun lepas 2001. Tahun 2017. Uh, Kuala Lumpur Sea Games. Follow your passion first. Um, 
when I retired from the game, you know, I sat there asking kind of all the wrong questions. You know, what's the biggest industry I can get into? And it's all the wrong stuff. And you got to sit there and ask yourself, okay, what am I truly passionate about? What do I enjoy doing? And when you feel that way, I, honestly, I mean, you feel like you have never worked a day in your life. It's the most fun thing in the world. You get up in the morning excited about what you're doing. And you got to be really honest with yourself about it. If you wake up in the morning and you're dreading going to work, dude, do something else. Right. Do something else. And those are hard decisions to make. But when you make those decisions, it's a very liberating experience. And you find out that the rewards will come. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, uh, to be a sponge. But you always want to outwork your potential. And as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport. And me coming in at 17, I hated when like my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow, right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. And, like, you know, <laughs> you know, Nick Van Exel would come up and say, are you okay? I'm like, what? <laughs> Am I, are you okay? <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? You know, so like, I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So like, every day in practice for me was really trying to annihilate everybody that, was, that I was playing against. Because I wanted to prove you don't need to babysit me. Like, I, I'm fine, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and so it's always um, that competitive nature the work ethic and curiosity because I asked a lot of questions you know, playing with Byron Scott I asked him a lot of questions Eddie Jones who was great at chasing guards off the screens and I didn't understand how to do that I would sit with him before practice after practice magic all the Laker greats I would always sit down and just ask him questions about certain games that I studied growing up what actually happened there what did you feel there and why We were playing against the Lakers, Tom, and we were out here in L.A. So the game was at 7. I was like, you know what? I'm going to come to the Staples Center because we're playing. This is when the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq, okay? This is, this is like the championship Lakers. I said, you know, I'm going to get there at 3 o'clock, and I want to make sure I make 400 made shots before I go back into the room, and then I sit in the sauna, and I get ready for the game. So, you know, get in the car, get to the gym, get there, and as I'm walking onto the court, who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant already working out. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down. And of course, I still heard the ball bouncing. I looked down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out. He's, he was working out for like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here. Right. And he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant or <laughs> lazy. He's doing like game moves. You know, um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes. I'm like, I want to see how long this goes. So I sit out there and watch uh, 25 minutes. And he got done. I said, OK, I think I've seen enough. Go play, you know, come back, get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on us, OK? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand, like, why why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game, I'm like, hey, Cove, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. And I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. If your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? to do that, you have to practice, you have to train. Right? You want to train as much as you can, as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, 12, say 12, train at 12, train for two hours, 12 to two. Um, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, whatever. you get back out, you train, start training again at six. Train from six to eight. Right? And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again, right? Those are two sessions. Right now imagine you wake up at three, you train at four, you go four to six, come home, breakfast, relax, so, so, blah, blah, blah. Now you're back at it again, nine to 11. Right, relax, and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, two to four, and now you're back at it again, seven to nine. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at four, right? So now you do that, and as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. And by year five or six, 
doesn't matter how, what kind of work they do in the summer, they're never going to catch up because they're five years behind. <laughs> right? So it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. If I start earlier, I can train more hours. And I know the other guys aren't doing it because I know what their training schedule is. Right? So I know if I do this consistently over time, this, the, the gap's just going to widen and widen and widen and widen and widen and they won't be able to get that back. So it, to me, it was just common sense. I'm like thinking, how can I get an advantage? Oh, start early. Yeah, let's do that. How do you how do you develop that, or where do you what do you learn that from? Well, I, I think it's just you know, it's just a matter of what's important to you. Mm -hmm. What's important to you for for whatever reason? You know, I, I felt like um, I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. If I felt like I left anything on the table, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. And so the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Absolutely beautiful, you guys. I can't believe it's come to an end. Um, you guys will always be in my heart. And uh, what can I say? Mamba out. Okay, so um, just get ready. So you always think uh for yourself, um, like the struggles that I've gone through, um, under pressure. Masa tahun dua ribu satu, ah, tahun dua lapan, dua ribu satu, dua ribu tujuh belas. Masa tahun dua ribu tujuh belas tu memang pressure ya, because I mean. Yelah, sebab kau tengok balik tahun 2001, saya pun ada pressure, uh, home ground and I did not do well. So 2017 tu sebab SEA Games sebab KL, tak tahu bila lagi SEA Games akan ada di KL. So I was able to macam kind of redeem myself uh, on uh, 1998 tu, apa yang saya buat uh, di bowling alley yang sama. So you know, uh, moral of the story is kita tak boleh give up walaupun uh, macam mana kita rasa uh, apa, perjuangan kita um, yang tak dapat pengiktirafan ke you know, you don't succeed at the first time at your first try, tapi don't give up sebab uh, kalau kita just keep working, keep working, keep working macam Kobe Bryant said tadi, you know Kalau orang lain bangun, uh, just train 2 jam, saya akan training 4 jam. Kita akan training, usually the elite athletes, the, the macam Michael Jordan, uh, Kobe Bryant, Tiger Woods semua, dia akan buat lebih daripada orang lain buat. Okay? Dia akan buat lebih daripada orang lain buat, so that dia boleh ada jurang yang besar di antara standard dia dengan standard orang lain. Okay? And when you do that, when you work hard in training and so on, Secara, secara tak langsung, bila you kena perform under pressure, you will be able to do it. Because dia dah, dah sebati dengan dengan diri you. Dah ada dalam diri you. Sebab you keep pushing yourself every day. Whether it's 10%, whether it's 30%, even though whether it's 1% pun. Just try and be better every single day. And that will help you to bring your stress level down. 
when you need to perform, whether it's in competition, whether it's in university, presentation, uh, Viva, whatever it is, it's always to be better uh, over prepared than under prepared. So, akad ni, uh, tu saja, kita, saya open to question and answer kalau ada anyone else ada any question uh, Puan Shazri nak tanya Ya yeah, boleh um, Macam mana uh, Puan start main bowling and, and siapa inspirasi Puan untuk main bowling Saya start main bowling umur saya 9 tahun uh, Saya main aktif sukan kat sekolah Um, dan saya fokus uh, pada bowling uh, lepas darjah 6 12 tahun macam tu, 13 tahun saya fokus only on bowling sebelum tu, uh, saya cakap tu lah, uh, that time tak ada sekolah sukan uh, so, tapi sekolah saya memang aktif bersukan uh, sekolah saya kira terror dan netball dekat area Pudu So masa saya sekolah, saya memang main semua jenis sukan, netball, handball, volleyball, badminton, uh, short part, lontar peluru, semua saya main. Tapi cuma bila saya umur saya 12 tahun, saya berbincang dengan pak saya dan kami bersetuju untuk fokus pada sukan bowling kepada sebab masa tu saya rasa um, kita berbincang dengan pak saya, saya rasa sukan bowling tu sukan yang boleh Uh, membantu saya menjadi world champion sebab maklamat saya untuk jadi world champion dan uh, ketika saya dari kerjaya saya permulaan kerjaya saya uh, memang kedua ibu bapa saya yang banyak uh, bagi sokongan moral uh, sokongan moral dari segi uh, kewangan juga sebab so banyak sebelum saya dapat wakil negara memang banyak banyak uh, dari segi kewangan yang perlu kami uh, korbankan uh, dari segi equipment, dari segi training sebab saya memang training lebih daripada orang lain uh, so memang mereka banyak uh, terpaksa keluarkan duit lah uh, pada permulaan uh, dan hanya lepas saya uh, wakil negara uh, tak payah bayar untuk training tapi saya selalu training extra juga dan ada equipment ke lain juga lah um, dan uh, kedua ibu saya, uh, pihak MSN, ISN, uh, setiap tak ada ISN lah, so MSN, satuan saya, jelatih saya uh, banyak beri sokongan dan dorongan kepada saya sehingga kini. Ya, yeah. uh, arrow uh, soalan dia Adam eh. Apa fungsi arrow yang ada pada track bowling? Pada lane eh, bukan track. Track is olahraga. Penting ke arrow? You rasa kalau ada petanda-petanda kat lane tu penting tak? Memanglah penting. Kalau tak penting, kita tak letak kat situ. <laughs> Macam kalau you track, kalau you lari. Mesti ada. Kalau dia tak, dia tak pain lorong tu, nanti dia lari berterabur kan. So memang ada. Uh, fungsi benda tu sebab you nak everything about bowling about close skill bowling ni close skill sport macam squash macam macam uh, golf okay uh, so bila tu it, dia memang banyak kepada repetition ulangan baling yang sama baling yang sama berulang ulang kali so bila you baling sama berulang kali apa yang, yang penting In everything you do, benda yang paling penting is consistency kan. So arrow tu ada kat situ sebagai petunjuk untuk you tahu mana nak baling. And baling ke tempat yang sama sahaja. So tu arrow, target, break point semua tu ada fungsi dia. Even kalau tengok kat dekat uh, atas lane tu ada board. 45, 47 board kat atas lane tu semua board tu memanjang daripada pin sampai ke tempat you diri tu. Semua ada fungsi dia. Okay. Kalau you tak gunakan uh, arrow semua tu memang rugilah. Sebab memang benda tu dah ada untuk membantu you. Okay. Arrow tu is just uh, a start lah. 
bila you start main bowling memang you akan tengok arrow semua tapi bila you dah go to the highest level dia bukan saja arrow dia ada banyak benda lain faktor lain yang you kena um fikir okey dari segi arrow ya ada break point and then ada setengah orang tu target system ada setengah orang tu target system so memang banyak mm-hmm. Pernah main bowling dekat Nintendo Wii? Uh, pernah. Tapi tak best. Main bowling yang betul lagi best. Yang lain tak ada soalan ke? Adam seorang je. Yang tanya. Ke semua semua main bowling tak ni? Pernah main bowling tak? Boleh main bowling untuk release stress. I, 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 apa? International Islamic University punya Mustang dulu terror tak main bowling? Banyak juga boleh. Uh, Puan, nak tanya? Hmm. Kalau boleh. macam contoh kan untuk beginner, uh, hmm. umur berapa yang Puan suggestkan untuk orang start belajar main bowling? It depends apa level yang you nak reach. Kalau you a uh, parent, you nak anak you maybe wakil sekolah, wakil negara, um, ada kalau kat US tu ada 3 4 tahun pun dia budak-budak dah start main bowling tapi main bowling suka-sukalah. Ah uh, fun. And then later on body specialize. Uh, tapi kalau you nak wakil negara uh, lagi bagus you start awal tapi you kena uh, larat angkat bola tu lah kalau start awal sangat tapi tak larat angkat bola pun susah juga. Sebab you will need at least I would say 5 to 10 years of basic punya knowledge, basic punya punya uh, training before you can go to MSSM uh, or uh, Sukma, yeah, you need at least 10 years. And ni ada satu lagi, how, any tips on how to really stress fast? Um, you boleh buat, there's a lot of different exercises that you can do kalau nak release stress. Uh, besides finding an outlet, you can also do breathing exercise. Breathing exercise pun ada banyak jenis breathing exercise whether pakai diaphragm ke, uh, whether pakai um, dia ada deep breathing exercise dengan yang nostril punya dia punya exercise, yang hidung punya. So you can actually search on Google, Google uh, breathing exercises. Memang ada banyak. Bunyi exercise pun ada yang untuk relax, ada yang untuk nak semangat. Untuk nak semangat, dia cepat. Untuk relax, it's very calming, relaxing lah. Uh, flow. And then, uh, the other ways to really stress, macam you dengan music, dengan music, or you uh, penggunaan warna pun boleh membantu really stress. Uh, usage of color sebab tu bila kalau you perasan bila you pergi uh, pantai beach tu you automatically macam otak you macam macam semua stress you macam cair macam really stress because bila tengok uh, apa tengok laut tu dia warna biru kan warna biru light color pastel color so dia automatically secara tak langsung membantu you to really stress whether you realize it or not uh, macam music uh, air laut kalau asyik dengar masa nak tidur tu kan on lah Spotify ke apa ke mind relaxing music sebab tu kalau you perasan bila you pergi spa orang pasang music kan music yang relaxing kan bila you, you ada urut kaki ke urut badan ke bila you dengar music tu automatic macam you relax kita tidur so use your senses use your senses to help you relieve stress dari segi uh, eyes Uh, the five senses lah, eyes, nose, uh, ada setengah orang bila dia makan dia really stress tapi tu tak bagus sebab tak efek dia nanti gemuk uh, so uh, eating, try and make uh, eat a point to eat healthier food uh, walaupun you rasa macam really stress juga tapi lah at least makanan tu berhasiat uh, daripada makan super ring ke apa ke ha. kan banyak sangat nanti susah pula so use all your senses to help you really stress Uh, music, vision, uh, color, um, physical exercise, uh, those are the, the few things that will help you to really stress. Puan uh, Syah, yeah. uh, uh, network pun macam low sikit. Nampak oh, tak?
Kau tak boleh nak buat apa kau nak buat tu Sebab dah memang ni um, Okay anyway um, Dah ada soalan lagi kat sini Boleh dengar lagi kan? Boleh boleh Ah uh, Okay uh, Nak nak bagi tips untuk swing bola tak susah uh, Susah nak bagi ya sebab Benda tu you kena buat, kena practical Kalau saya cakap pun uh, Kalau you tak faham And you don't, you tak pernah go through coaching You tak tahu macam nak buat So, bola ni dia susah jenis you tak boleh cakap You kena And I also need to see whether what type of uh, Learner are you, whether you are visual, whether you are auditory, whether you are kinesthetic um, That also plays an important part when you are trying to coach someone So just try offhand, cakap offhand Macam mana bagi tips nak swing bola tu macam random sangat and luar sangat So it's very hard, you have to like go and uh, get proper training uh, to see what is your weakness and what is your strength and then work from there so susah uh, susah saya nak bagi yang uh, yang uh, soalan Adam ni dekat selalu paling tegak dia pula you have to learn the skill you have to learn the skills as in everything you do in life that is skill involved you kena belajar skill tu ada sebab kenapa bola uh, Pemain elit macam Rafiq Ismail, saya Zulman Zanzifli, Esther Chan, Natasha Roslan Sitafia, semua hook bola you tak hook Ada sebab Dari segi skill, dari segi equipment ha. So, kalau you betul-betul main, main bowling, you kena Belajar dengan lebih mendalam lah ha. And then Shafiq ada tanya soalan, bagaimana Puan menangani perasaan gugup Dalam menghadapi lawan-lawan yang ber bernama besar Apakah tips untuk kekal bertenang dalam menghadapi game yang suka? Shafiq ni saya dah tadi saya share uh, When you are nervous, that's why you concentrate on the process uh, Untuk menjawab soalan ni, kembali balik kepada proses You focus on your process You jangan focus on the environment and your opponent Unless you are a spot where you can react to your opponent Okay Because Macam saya cakap tadi, apa opponent you buat, apa environment you, uh, apa terjadi dalam environment tu berada di luar kawalan you. So don't worry about things that you cannot control. No point. No point stressing out over things that you cannot control. The only thing you can control is you yourself and how you react to things. That's why kita kena cukup training, cukup ilmu so that when you go and compete, you tahu apa yang you kena buat kalau kita tak tahu, tak ada ilmu, bila kita compete memang you akan gugup tapi also bila ada ilmu pun kadang-kadang you, you akan gugup tapi you akan gugup kurang daripada orang yang tak ada ilmu sebab you tahu apa nak buat, you tahu proses dia and it's normal for someone to be nervous you kena faham eh, banyak orang banyak orang ada si, silap tanggapan tentang perasaan gugup being nervous banyak orang rasa being nervous is bad it's something bad, it's something negative. It is totally not. Totally not bad and not negative. Being gugup, being scared, being nervous is something very good. Tukar, tukar mindset tu daripada fixed mindset to growth mindset. Sebab, bila you nervous, that means you nak berjaya, you nak menang. Bila you tak rasa gugup tu, tu yang you patut risau. Sebab, itu akan Bermakna yang benda tu tak penting untuk you You tak kisah apa Apa uh, result Daripada Benda yang you buat tu So actually being nervous is good Like for me Saya From my experiences Saya belajar yang Macam budak-budak Sukma saya pun Sebab saya coach Sukma uh, Juga dulu uh, Untuk Selangor um, Banyak cakap oh, Saya nervous lah coach macam no, it's fine. Being nervous is good because having butterflies in your stomach is good. That means you want to win. So banyak orang fikir benda tu negatif. Habis lah, habis lah. Lepas tu, oh, banyak kali pergi tandas. Habis lah, lepas ni mesti tak boleh fokus. Mesti tak boleh main. No, actually. Actually, it's bagus. Sebab maknanya you nak menang. You nak main, you nak compete. Adrenaline rush tu boleh membuatkan you main lagi bagus. Bukan membuatkan you main. Banyak orang fikir adrenaline tu buat you main lagi teruk. Tukar. Tukar mindset tu, okay?
and stick untuk kekal bertenang nama hari gain squat is concentrate on the process don't concentrate on the result concentrate on the process because the process will get you a good result a good and consistent result whatever result that may be lah depending on your process kalau you apply process you betul insyaallah result will be good podium finish or i don't know depends on your ability juga Bagaimana untuk kekal aktif dalam sepukan bekerja? You have to find the time. You have to find the time. Cari masa. Tak kisahlah setengah jam ke, uh, satu jam ke. Mesti ada masa. Kita ada, kita ada 24. 24 jam sehari. Kan? So kita kena gunakan 24 jam tu sebaik yang mungkin. Okay? Saya pun actually tak ada tak ada banyak masa juga. Tapi saya just redah je kadang-kadang. Ah, ha? uh, sebab macam saya dengan training, saya uh, apa anak saya saya hantar ambil anak saya sekolah, and then saya uh, training saya pergi gym, and then saya kerja dekat persatuan juga part time, and then saya ada buat uh, tolong NGO lain juga kat OCM punya Ethics Commission, uh, dan saya pun ada juga uh, tolong kita punya World Bowling, dan saya ada buat personal coaching juga. So memang kalau you just nak pakai masa tu sebagai alasan susah sebab actually boleh aja tapi kita kena make sure priority kita betul lah apa priority you macam contoh you nak ada uh, kejohanan akan uh, dalam masa terdekat ni so you make sure you focus more lebihkan masa sikit on training on I don't know uh, whatever yang uh, competition atau presentation yang you ada dekat tu so Prioritize. Prioritize insyaAllah semua yang you buat tu, you boleh selesaikan. Kalau boleh, after like, you know, uh, after prayers pagi tu, terus start off your day early, then you have plenty of time to do whatever you want. Okay. Adakah analyze gate opponent game perlu membantu untuk kita menangis? It depends. Uh, I would say yes. Uh, but it depends on the different sports. Macam bowling walaupun kita bukan dalam contact sport tapi it, and semua orang main oiling pattern yang sama tapi ada setengah advantage uh, juga kalau you tahu opponent ni macam mana especially like contoh macam tadi yang uh, video yang saya share tu saya lawan dengan Shana Eng saya ambil uh, yang oiling pattern yang saya main tu saya ambil saya higher seat saya ambil short oil sebab saya, itu strength saya short all. Dia strength dia long all. So, uh, memang adalah peranan untuk you tahu opponent you punya strength and weaknesses. Tapi you still have to play your best juga. Kalau you tahu opponent you punya strength or weaknesses, tapi you sendiri tak boleh perform up to par on your own uh, ability pun tak membawa hasil juga kepada you. So you have to have good control over yourself, your game, uh, your mental game, your physical game so that benda yang kecil yang macam tu you dapat make better decisions and uh, insyaAllah uh, get better results. Puan Charlene. Ya, yeah, saya. Uh, mungkin ni soalan last dari saya. <laughs> Okay. okay, tadi Puan Syahin cakap uh, jadi coach untuk semua kan. So, hmm. macam mana kalau kita, kita kita adalah satu salah satu captain dekat one team and ada hmm. kita punya kita punya anak buah tu rasa macam rasa demotivated macam tu. Macam dia, macam dia nak give up lah dekat game yang dia belum main lagi. So, macam mana kita Kenapa nak handle? Macam-macam tadi dia lah, dia macam, macam dia rasa gugup semua, macam tak yakin macam tu. So macam kita nak yakinkan dia balik untuk anak buah kita. That tu. means that means masa training tu dia tak training betul-betul. Dia tak fokus on benda-benda yang dia patut fokus in training because dia macam um, that apa that saying lah macam cakap train uh, apa uh, train in practice as though you are in competition so that when you are competing it feels like you're in practice ah uh, so kalau you masih training you main-main 
you tak fokus, you tak work on your game. Ah, uh, then masa tiba-tiba masa competition you nak turn semua on. Memang tak akan jadi. Because you have to work your mind sama macam you work your body. Sebab kalau mind you, okay, oh, saya saya menang, saya bagus, saya ni. Tapi kalau badan you tak pernah buat pergerakan tu, dia tak akan tahu apa nak buat. Walaupun otak you cakap ya, yeah, ya yeah, boleh, tapi Ada badan you, balance. dia masa memory. Dia semua berkait rapat masa memory. So kalau you, you tahu apa nak buat, tapi badan you tak pernah buat pergerakan tu, so tak efisien juga. So it depends. As a leader also, you have to develop good leadership skills juga. You kena tengok apa yang teammate you perlukan. Tengah teammate, that's why it goes back to your learning style. Whether you are, um, apa, whether you are auditory, uh, visual atau kinesthetic. Sebab kadang-kadang ada sebab kenapa orang tu masa training main-main. Mungkin cara pendekatan coach tu yang ajar tu is just vis- uh, verbal. Dia, dia dan orang yang student tu yang belajar tu dia dia bukan orang yang jenis verbal dia kepada visual. So apa makna dia? So makna dia coach tu kena tahulah player dia semua macam mana and as a leader pun you kena tahu play teammate dia macam mana. Kalau dia jenis yang visual, you cakap 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 100 kali pun tak masuk otak dia. Sebab you kena tunjuk kat dia. That's why it's very important for you go back to what we said just now to know yourself. When you know yourself, you know. Okay, saya tak boleh. Kalau orang cakap, tak boleh masuk lah. Saya kena tengok. Tengok orang buat, nanti tu saya buat. Then baru boleh masuk. So, as a leader, as a coach, you have to know your student, your players, and see which type of uh, learner are they, are they. Whether visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. Then, baru you boleh ajar dia orang dengan lebih efektif and they can absorb what you are teaching. Kalau tidak, macam dulu old school ni test, semua dah kadang-kadang dia, benda ni tak, dia tak, hmm, dia tak titik beratkan. So, kadang-kadang kita habis banyak masa, tahun, training, 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 tapi budak tu tak boleh nak, tak boleh nak absorb apa yang dia belajar. Ini salah satu sebab dia kerana kita tak tahu budak tu actually dia tak boleh. Dia cakap sepuluh kali pun tak masuk. Dia kena tunjuk. Dia kena buat dan boleh faham. So that's why kita kena tahu. As a leader kena tahu uh, teammate kita, macam saya ada, ada setengah teammate, saya tak boleh agresif dengan orang, nanti dia lagi stress. Uh, ada setengah teammate, saya kena agresif, saya kena push orang, so orang boleh boleh go through that. Ada setengah tu saya kena macam uh, marah dia orang. So bila dia marah, saya saya marah kat dia orang, dia orang marah kat saya dan dia akan lupa rasa gugup tu. So there is a lot, a lot of probability, uh, a lot of different techniques yang dipakai. Tapi you kena tahu, you kena tahu your teammate, your opponent macam mana. I mean your teammate uh, and the coaches pun kena tahu dia players macam mana. Then, senang untuk you selesaikan masalah tu. Ada lagi soalan? Memang semua off camera eh? Ni off punya ni. Ad, ada yang tak boleh on camera sebab guna PC office. Oh I see, I see, okay, okay, okay. Tu tengok lah tak ada, tak boleh tengok apa feedback muka semua. Tak tahu okey ke tak. So I hope um, Uh, saya dapat sedikit sebanyak uh, apa melalui sharing saya hari ini you all dapat belajarlah sikit tentang uh, apa tentang how to control stress kenapa stress tu berlaku uh, cara-cara nak tangani uh, focus uh, on yourself on what you can control uh, jangan benda-benda di luar kawalan kita tak payahlah risau sangat you know uh, sebab kalau dah tak ada untuk benda tu jadi, dia akan jadi, you know, uh, certain things are not within our control and not within our plan. So, um, saya harap uh, apa uh, sharing saya hari ni dapat ber, 
apa bawa, bawa manfaat kepada semua dan kalau ada salah silap ke saya minta maaf um, and saya harap uh, insyaAllah dapat jumpa lagi lah okay, Terima kasih Puan Syahlin uh, untuk untuk ceramah pada pagi ni semoga kita semua Sama -sama. mendapat manfaat daripada ceramah itu tadi Uh, oleh itu kita akhiri program kita pada pagi ini dengan tasbih kifarah dan surah wal ans. Terima kasih Puan Shazin. Jaga diri. Terima kasih semua. Assalamualaikum.